According to recent studies, about a third of college students have alcohol-related problems. At ASU, psychology professor Will Corbin analyzes factors that lead to alcohol problems in young people. One way he does this is by bringing participants into his lab. Hi, Professor. Hi, April. How are you? Good. Welcome to the bar lab. Oh, thanks. What are signs that someone has a drinking problem? Well, I think it, it depends on the person. There are a number of different things that could suggest that maybe you have a problem. I think one of the classic ones we think about is sort of physical dependence mm -hmm. signs, um, things like tolerance and withdrawal. Tolerance is sort of when you need more alcohol to get the same kind of effects that you used to get with fewer drinks. Uh, whereas withdrawal is sort of after a period of not having alcohol, having symptoms that like shaking and mm. feeling nervous, having a headache, um, telling you that you need alcohol to kind of restore your system to a normal level of functioning. And sometimes that will lead people to say drink first thing in the morning um, in response to that. And that's a really uh, pretty powerful sign of a developing alcohol problem. Um, but there are also more psychological and social kinds of um, signs. So psychologically, sort of feeling like your drinking is out of control or having trouble stopping drinking once you've started, even when you try to. Uh, and then socially, maybe problems in relationships with a significant other or with family members or problems at work or in school. Uh, all those things could be a sign that alcohol problems are developed. And what are some steps that people can take to overcome alcohol problems? Well, I think it depends on sort of where somebody is in terms of a developing alcohol problem. For those who are not really severely alcohol dependent, but maybe just starting to develop problems, a lot of times they can change those behaviors on their own. Uh, and I think the most important thing is just being motivated to make those mm -hmm. changes. Sort of asking yourself what are the things that um, what are the negative consequences I'm experiencing from drinking and how could I you know, improve my life by making some changes and then making very concrete goals for you know these this is the number of drinks I'm gonna allow myself to have or the number of days on which I'm gonna drink and then figuring out strategies to be able to successfully do that so maybe alternating between alcoholic and non-alcoholic drinks when you go out or maybe just arriving uh, at a bar an hour later and leaving an hour earlier, giving yourself less time uh, to drink as much. So describe your research for me. What do people do when they come into the bar? Well, you know, every study we do is a little bit different, but the, the basic methods tend to be the same from one study to the next. So when they first come in, uh, they'll come in and complete surveys, asking them about a lot of background kinds of um, characteristics, things like, um, personality characteristics, things like that that might be of interest to us. And then when they're done with all of those interviews, we'll bring them into the bar, they'll sit at the bar, and we'll serve them three drinks. And those drinks are based on their gender, their body weight, their height, so that we calculate it out for each person so that we get them to the same blood alcohol level. And then they'll have 30 minutes to drink those three drinks. So we space that out over 10 minutes, so we serve them the first drink, when they get eight minutes in, we say, you know, you've got two minutes to finish up this drink, and then we'll give them the second drink, and we just go through until they've had it. That way we keep the sort of pace of the drinking constant um, across all nights. And then we give them about 15 minutes after that last drink to just kind of absorb the alcohol. And at that point, we take our first blood alcohol test. We use a breathalyzer, and we test their blood alcohol level. And then we put them through a lot of other kinds of computer tasks and things uh, after they've been drinking so that we can look and see how alcohol affects their behavior along a number of different kinds of dimensions. Uh, usually we'll be done, we start at 5 o'clock, we'll usually finish up around 9 o'clock with the data collection, but then we're required to keep people here until their blood alcohol level comes back down to a .02. So that usually means several hours of hanging out with us after we get done with the data collection. So we've got uh, TVs with satellite and we've got an Xbox and uh, you know, things to keep them entertained and we give them food and, uh, and basically we just keep track of their blood alcohol levels. And once they get down to a 0.02, 
then we're allowed to debrief them and pay them and send them home. But even at that point, we still uh, actually call a cab for them and have a cab take them home. So they know coming in that they have to get dropped off. They can't have a car here. Um, and that way we do everything we can to try to protect our participants from you know, getting in trouble for being behind the wheel of a car when they've been drinking, for example.